Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 3 is here, and I promised I would make a new NVIDIA control panel settings video because it kind of works in tandem with my in-game settings video that I did like one or two days ago now. So it's here. Let's get into it real quick. What you want to do is go straight into your NVIDIA control panel. It may be in your display tray down here, or you can just right-click anywhere on your desktop and it should say it. If it does not say it, try searching it up here in your windows. And if you can't search it, it isn't in your search. It just doesn't seem to be on your PC, but you definitely have an NVIDIA graphics card go into your Microsoft store and you can actually download it there. But now we're all on the same page. What you want to do is start off with your 3D settings. So go over to adjust image settings with preview. The trick here is to set this initially down to use my preference, emphasizing and drag this from balanced all the way down to performance. You then want to press apply and then click back to use the advanced 3D image settings and then press take me there. Now I'm going to skip the settings that don't relate to Fortnite, but if they affect your FPS, I will definitely mention them because they can you know, generally on your system, decrease performance, or they're just useless and you will never ever use them in your life. So you may as well turn them off. But for the most part, it's going to be straight to the point. So let's start. So starting off with image scaling, what this will do is it will scale your image. So basically it'll punch up your image. Let's say you, your monitor is a 720p monitor. You can actually try and achieve 1080p. But what that'll do is it'll kind of punch it up and then to, you know, you're expanding things. So what it's going to do is it's going to pull out the quality, but then to up the quality, they'll sharpen the monitor. So it'll sharpen your image and then it's meant to look you know like 1920 by 1080 opposed to 720 uh or like 1280 by 720 which is 720p but honestly it isn't worth it you know again maybe if you're on 720p you can do that but for the most part you will actually get better frames in fortnite playing 720p opposed to 1080p so maybe it's an advantage but other than that if you're already at 1080p you will not need this and that goes for like the 99.5 percent of people watching this video ambient occlusion turn this off anisotropic filtering anti-aliasing all these need to be off they do not benefit your performance one bit they make the image look a little more sharper a little better but that isn't going to benefit your performance it's going to lower your performance and make your game look a little better for the most part for fortnite we don't want that background application max frame rate don't bother with this just keep it off cuda gpu said that's all cuda sysmem fallback policy driver default dsl factors have that on off none of these things are really going to benefit your frames they're just going to do the complete opposite max frame rate have that set off i'm trying to like cap that anywhere here low latency mode i've mine it off this is actually kind of controversial a lot of people have this turned on definitely don't put on ultra ultra actually does the opposite and it was said induce latency which means increase and bring on latency which you know hires your input lag does a complete polar opposite it's counterintuitive just to clarify but have this on on or off so you want to try this one out per my last video or my game user settings or my you know video settings video having this on off if you have copied those settings is going to be better for you if you have not copied those settings have this turned on on for the most part have this turned on try it out it should feel more snappy and you know responsive but if it doesn't try it on and off i know people hate to hear that but honestly it's one you have to trial if you again copy my video settings if you copy my game user settings video have it on off that's why i have it on this works best for me but if you didn't copy them and you you know are using nvidia reflex low latency in game and you have it on on plus boost which most of you do if you're copying like you know it's jerry in settings for example or most pros actually keep it on on but if you copy my settings have it on off because that is better you have to have it set up very particularly for this to you know do what it's meant to do everything else here have these on off open gl this is something that doesn't matter too much if you're getting an open gl rendering error at any point in any game but it can happen in fortnite and it can cause your game to crash what you want to do is make sure your gdi compatibility is set to auto and then change your open gl rendering gpu to your actual graphics card so mine's an auto select because i've never had this issue but you can literally just set it as your graphics card it's just more precise it hasn't have, doesn't have to guess how management mode of course have this on prefer maximum performance it's gonna use more power in your house you know you're gonna get them watts are gonna be being used your power supply is gonna be working but what this does is it means every component in your system is at its best it's at its peak performance and that's what you want you do not want this on normal this will like drastically affect your frames Third refresh rate, of course, highest available. Shader cache size, a very interesting one. I have mine on 10 gigabytes. That is usually what is recommended. You can, if you have a good GPU, a good graphics card, have this on unlimited. But for the most part, people will recommend 10 gigabytes. Anything like lower is actually going to do worse for you. And just for like a little bit of context, when you update your graphics card, your shader cache will pretty much reset and it needs to build itself back up. Having like 10 gigabytes of shader cache is good because it doesn't give you too much to the point where it's, 
you know, overloaded and you're going to start losing performance, but it gives you enough. So things have been rendered before. It's a little familiar with your system, your graphics card, or your driver knows what it's doing. It's used to working with the games that you play and, you know, rendering and viewing such textures, but it isn't too much to the point where it's going to get bloated. I guess that's the best way I can describe this. But yeah, fun fact, I only just learned this. Shout out to the boy Corvi. But when you reinstall a new driver and your shader cache hasn't really built yet, you will actually get lower FPS initially. Now, these are important. It's texture filtering, anisotropic filtering, and anti-aliasing stuff is a little bit different when it comes to texture filtering. These will affect your frames. So have these an on allow high performance because of course we don't want it to look great. We want to just have the best performance. And for the most part, it, it's doable. It's workable. It looks fine. Like we've all used performance mode and like lowest phone angles for the longest time. It's never been an issue. Reddit optimization, very important one. For the most part, the key rule with this is if you had more than eight cores on your CPU, your processor, what you would do is you'd have this turned on. But it's a little bit different now. I have mine turned off because of one special reason. And if you search up graphic settings and go into here and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, also known as HAGS, is turned on. What you want to do is, for the most part, have this turned off. Now, if HAGS is turned off, you probably want to have this turned on. So that's kind of the, the rule here, the general rule. Also, of course, if you want to have it on, just make sure you at least have eight cores on your processor. You can do that by going into your task manager and then go to performance, CPU, and you can see your cores. So focus here on logical processors, not actually where it says cores. Cores. I know it's quite confusing, but logical processors, I have eight, which means I can use this. If you have anything less than eight, don't bother. And in that case, copy my settings here actually. So off and then hardware accelerated GPU scheduling turned on. And I do know it says reduce latency and improve performance. It isn't always going to do this. So don't worry if you've have, you know, you have threaded optimization on and you're also then turning this off. Don't worry. Trust me. That's just like the balance and how it works. Again, these things are very temperamental and they have to work in sync with each other. So it's either or again, it's one you want to try. But for me, this works best. And if you're copying, my previous videos, this is going to work best. And everything else, of course, don't worry about the bottom things is like VR, virtual reality stuff, unless you actually use a VR headset. Triple buffering, of course, have that off. Vertical sync, we know how much we hate V-Sync. Have that turned off unless you have a V-Sync set up, you know, a V-Sync system and you set it up and configured V-Sync and you have average less than 60 FPS, but for the most part, turn that off. Now going to display, I want to quickly really get this video over with. I've been rambling quite a bit, I fear. Um, change resolution, have this set to your default, so your native, either or like this says ultra hd it actually isn't but i usually just use a pc option so 1920 by 1080 refresh rate have that on the max default color settings people say they're better for performance if you want you can use nvidia's and you know pump this up from limited to full and it will probably look like you probably have a generally better image but i use the default colors um a lot of time that will be full but again you can go in here and change it and it will make your dynamic range a little better could potentially lower performance people don't really talk about that but that is a thing annoyingly adjust desktop color settings this isn't going to affect your performance at all a lot of people people, you know, will bump these up and change things here a little bit, you know, um, I don't mess with it personally, but you can adjust desktop size and position. I have these both set to no scaling and I perform scaling on the display. Now, some of your monitors will only allow you to perform scaling on your GPU and that will give you lower input lag. But if you only have the one option and you can only perform scaling like my second monitor on the GPU, you will have lower input lag than, you know, the average person who doesn't have this and can perform scaling on display, but it's just because your monitor it's probably slightly outdated. Um, I know that may be hard to hear, but you will probably want to upgrade at some point and then make sure you have a DP cable, a display port cable, and you'll be getting the best lowest latency and you'll be reaching your actual refresh rate. So yeah, definitely upgrade that if you have, you know, like a second monitor like me, which only can perform scaling on the GPU. Oh, and the general exception here is if you have stretch resolution or you use a stretch resolution, you have these set to full screen. Um, but if you're not, don't bother scaling. And last but not least, for my RTX brothers, people out there with 2070s, uh, 3070s, maybe even 4090s. What you want to do is click onto system information. It should be down here in the bottom left, but if not, I think you can go somewhere here. Help system information. Sorry. You want to open that out and ensure that resizable bar says yes. If resizable bar does not say yes for you and you have an RTX graphics card, you want to fix that. Now it's a bit of a long winded process. Honest. Well, I say that takes five minutes, but I'm not going to show in this video, but just to put you guys on game, you want that to say, yes. All right. You want it to say yes for your RTX people only. You want it to say yes. So go and watch a video. You'll find it somewhere. Super simple, actually. I mean, I say it's, it's tedious maybe a little bit, but five minutes you can fix this and it will boost your FPS massively. So go and do that.